Hi, welcome to Microscan's Tech Tips for Microhawk. So this video will discuss the USB keyboard wedge option, its applications, and how to set it up on your Microhawk barcode reader. The keyboard wedge is commonly referred to as USB keyboard on USB devices and is simply a method for outputting barcode data into any active document by simulating the keystrokes on a keyboard. There are two overarching categories to accomplish this. The first is software-based, in which you have a third-party software that takes the barcode data strings, converts them into keystrokes, and then sends it on to its final destination via software. The second is hardware-based and generally uses a physical accessory such as a dongle or inline cable to physically convert those keystrokes and send them off to their final destination, often through a USB port. All of the MicroHawk ID products offer at least one of these two methods for keyboard wedge data output, again, software or hardware-based. In the case of the MicroHawk ID20 and ID30, they offer native USB keyboard wedge support through their USB connections. The MicroHawk ID40 offers this option through the use of a hardware accessory cable shown below. The keyboard wedge is generally used anytime you need to output the barcode data into a text entry field or anywhere that would normally be filled out by a human using a keyboard. Examples of this would be a spreadsheet program, word processor, a web form, or again, any other text entry field that would normally be filled out by a human with a keyboard. The MicroHawk also offers simultaneous keyboard wedge output and live communication through either our web link interface or ESP. And this allows you to not only output barcode data via the keyboard wedge, but also monitor live images while making real-time setup changes, an ability that was previously unavailable in earlier products. We're now going to demonstrate how to set up the USB keyboard wedge with your MicroHawk barcode reader. Today, we're going to use a MicroHawk ID30 fixed focus reader. We'll start by opening a web browser window, such as Google Chrome, and entering in the IP address for the barcode reader itself, whether that be the default address like we're using here, or the assigned IP address that you had given to it. This will automatically open WebLink. The reader is already reading in continuous mode, and you can see the output here, and it's reading those codes as fast as it can. The first step in configuring the reader for the keyboard wedge output is to go to the application settings, or the gear-shaped icon here in the upper right, and navigate to our advanced settings icon here. This will open up a separate window with all of the advanced settings on the reader. You can either navigate to the USB keyboard wedge by going to the Communications tab and scrolling manually, or by using the Intelligent Search field here and type in a keyword that will take you automatically to that section. We're obviously concerned with the USB keyboard wedge. To enable it, simply click on the word Disabled, select Enabled, and then save the settings to the reader by clicking on this flash button here in the upper right. Select OK, and the reader will reboot. The connection will temporarily drop while the reader reboots itself, and you can see the lights changing in the video feed at the top of the screen. While the reader is rebooting, we're going to cover the barcodes. We do this because we have the reader in a continuous read mode, and when it's finished rebooting, it will automatically be outputting to the active window, which will be WebLink by default. If the barcodes are not covered up, it'll cause issues with the WebLink interface. All right, now that the reader has rebooted, we can click Reconnect to get connected back to WebLink, which is pretty much instantaneous here. The Data Channel Connect shows that we're connected, so let's go ahead and close that window. We have the barcodes covered up now so we can make any additional configuration changes needed. Since WebLink is the active window when we uncover the barcodes and try and make an actual configuration change, you can see as we try to scroll on the left side here, WebLink does not want to respond. We need to make Notepad the active window when you want the data to output so the data will populate as expected. If you do need to make configuration changes while you have the reader in a continuous mode, just make sure you cover up the barcodes, make your changes, and then make the output window active and reveal the barcodes again. The keyboard wedge function does work in all other read cycle modes. We can select a triggered mode by clicking on the cycle drop down here and selecting triggered. You can see that the light pattern changed in the video feed at the top of the screen, so now we only have the blue targeting lights on and no illumination. You also notice that the image in WebLink does not update automatically because it's waiting for a trigger signal to take an image. 
For this demonstration, we can send a manual trigger by pressing the button on the top of the reader, and you'll notice the image in WebLink updates. Now we can make Notepad the active window, manually trigger the reader, and you'll see the output to Notepad in the green confirmation in WebLink that we're receiving decoded output. By using triggered mode and manually triggering the reader, we can make live configuration changes unlike when we were in continuous mode in the initial setup. Disabling the keyboard wedge output is simply the reverse of enabling it. We go back up to Application Settings and click on Advanced icon. Navigate to the USB keyboard wedge section and change Enabled to Disabled. And then save the configuration to the reader, which will require another reboot. Click OK. And again, the connection will temporarily drop while the reader is rebooting. We can see the light pattern change in the video feed at the top of the screen, and we'll be able to reconnect momentarily. Now we need to simply connect WebLink again and receive the confirmation we're connected. Next, we'll make Notepad the active window and demonstrate that the keyboard wedge is no longer active. Now you can see that the manual trigger is no longer outputting to the Notepad active window. In this video, we discussed the keyboard wedge option, its applications, and how to set it up on the MicroHawk platform using WebLink. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to check out the tech tips for MicroHawk Library for additional topics.